The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. G'day, Clayton here from Ensemble. Thanks for joining me for this podcast. It's a pleasure to be able to do this from time to time. Hopefully you enjoy. If you're not already on Ensemble, please go to Ensemble.com or find us in the App Store. This episode is brought to you by Capital Group, one of the oldest and largest asset management companies in the world, managing multi-asset equity and fixed income investment strategies for different types of investors. Since 1931, Capital Group has been singularly focused on delivering superior, consistent results for long-term investors using high-conviction portfolios, rigorous research and individual accountability. G'day, Clayton here from Ensemble. It's been a little while, but I needed to drag you in to the podcasting arena again, Paul, for the fifth or sixth time. I can't remember what, how many it is, but mate, it's Monday morning. Thank you so much for coming in. Mate, I've dragged myself all the way in, Clay, this morning. Yeah. Dragged all the way in from Cronulla. It's yeah. a long way. God's country I, as and well. And I don't, you know, you know I don't come in the city much these no, days. No, I know. That's uh, what, when I found out you were coming in, I, that's why we booked it in. Absolutely. Um, Glad to be here, mate, as usual. And, uh, uh, mate. Let's, let's tear everything apart. Let's tear it all apart. So, <laughs> uh, so there's a lot, a lot to discuss. One of, the, one of the key things that I'm hearing a lot about is there's a lot going on in terms of there's a lot of business. There's a lot of business to be had at the moment in the in the business of financial planning. What's your view on that? There's always been lots of business in the business of financial planning because or financial advice, whatever we're calling ourselves these days, uh, because people need advice. People need to understand how to deal with the money on a day to day basis. Yes. Now, currently, yes, there's a massive gap in the market where people aren't getting that lower level of advice that they used to get. You know, yep. through, you know. People coming to their workplace, workplace super thing, you know, that all that sort of thing. You know. Yeah. So, and the complexity of the world, like, it's, it's getting more complex. So, it is, and, you know, people getting scammed all the time. Yeah. People need advice, Clay, and that's yeah. what it is. And funny enough, what, we're half the size we used to be. So, yeah. supply and demand, mate. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And uh, so, yes, we're we're very busy at the moment as well, yeah. uh, which is, look, it's great, but... Um, the challenge around that, yeah. like it sounds great, right? Yes, yeah, so I've got clients knocking down our door. And yeah. However, there's been no allowances made in any way, shape or form around the compliance that yes. we need to do. Yes. So all that that, you know, was in place pre, pre-Royal pre Commission yeah. uh, is still there and a post-Royal Commission and, you know, so everyone's – so a lot of people have left and there's been no allowances for those who are still here yeah. fighting the good fight. Yes. Um, yeah, it's challenging, mate. So, yes, whilst it may seem, yeah, to observers that we've got it easy, it's actually really tough putting business through. You know, it's a, it's a lot of work. Has has the requirements for implementation increased over the last 12 months? They've, they've stayed the same. Okay. So, nothing's really changed. You know, whilst right. there's been all the jaw boning and, yeah. you know, all this sort of stuff and, you know, people being compensated and yeah. blah, blah, blah. We all know those stories. Um, there's been no allowances in or change in anything for the last five years, really. Yeah. Um, so, it's not easy still. It's yeah. not easy being an advisor. We're still not trusted in, this, in society, you know what I mean? Like have, by, have by the regulators to, and have everything seen like that. any kind of improvement in that regard? Well, I did see an article come out uh, from Stephen Jones that uh, I think there was a late Friday that um, now that the budget's out of the way, he can get on with his you know QAR or whatever you know quality yeah. quality of advice review yeah. and and looking at that. Um, the only one thing that w- he has announced was that uh, the uh, land so the the pathway for an experienced advisor. Uh, you know the how they but, ten years. Well, the ten years, and you don't yeah. need to do a, a new degree, and you yeah. know, and all that sort of thing. Yeah, um, which will keep people in the industry, which is good, and yeah. very experienced people. Yeah, um, and the people who want to be in the industry because they're yeah. still here. Yeah. So yeah, that that's been the only announcement that I've seen, which does give some comfort to um, old timers like me, mate. <laughs> 
<laughs> what's 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 interesting uh, is a bunch of the guys that I know are going to hit the nine and a half year yeah. oh. mark around about that time, which is pretty brutal. Um, so yeah, I'm not I'm not quite sure what they can do about that, but my God, if they can avoid having to do another whole degree, well, or, or, or you know, a gap analysis of your your qualifications, all that sort of thing. And look, I get it. And my, my only challenge with that is, you know, that they're well. That if they weren't going to do that is, well, you know, look, I did a degree very long time ago. It's not relevant whatsoever, yeah, right, yeah. in this day and age. It was yeah, pre- yeah. You did it in hairdressing, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, mate, come on. Now you've told my secrets. <laughs> no, I got it in the cornflakes packet, my degree. No, um, <laughs> it was a long time ago. And, uh, you know, the world's changed 20 times since then, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I've been a licensed advisor since 2000. And oh, I've hit every, you know, CPD point. Yeah. Every year, yeah. um, I've done extra study because you have to do that for you know just other qualifications that you've done. I've done yeah. you know my my chartered program through uh, the AFA, you know, yeah. chartered financial advisor, fish and chips as I called it. Yeah. Um, so I've done yeah. You have to do things along. I've done my mortgage broking licenses, things like that, right? Yeah. Uh, but if you've done twenty odd years of CPD points, yes. I mean, these days I'm actually writing, you know, things that, that are earning people CPD <laughs> points, right? So um, there needs to be – I just hope for the industry and for every – you know, the consumers out there and the customers and, and the people out there who need advice that we just have some clear air for a while because um, yeah. it has been – a long, hard road, mate, and hence why I look like I do. And thank, <laughs> thank God we're not videoing this. It's best. To, it hasn't been easy. It's taken its toll sometimes, you know. Um, <laughs> oh, look, it's uh, it's one of those things where it, it's almost it, it, it's almost like financial planning became so hard, so difficult. You know that the, the numbers halved, right? Uh, but at least the stability has meant that work can be done, but everyone's had to adopt a, a particular model. Um, yeah. it, with the QAR, right, that's probably going to be the next big thing in whatever version comes out. Um, let's assume, because this is a, a really fun, and it is a thought experiment, but it's a thought experiment that I think has, has some validity. Let's assume QAR comes in. Now, I'll walk you through the way that I kind of see it happening. I see a lot of advisors who have been through the hard yards, right? So everyone now has a pretty clear process. Everyone now knows what it costs to deliver advice. Everyone knows how many hours it's going to take. They know the type of work that they can deliver, which adds value to the clients and to their own uh, you know, revenue lines. Um, and, a, and a lot of, I would say, uh, the fat has been cut off, not, not so much in terms of the people within the industry, but certainly within the business models of financial planning. Now, if QAR comes around, there's a, a handful of questions or a handful of sort of um, areas that things are going to change. First and foremost, licensing. I mean, licensing in its true sense right now is something that a magnifying glass is constantly being thrown over the top of by financial planners. Yep. Um, Has to be. It's a major cost. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and if QAR comes in, the necessity for what the value is, you know, delivered within a license is going to be massively challenged. That's, that's, clearly going to be one of the first things it's it, not that there is a a systemized approach at eroding licenses but it kind of can be interpreted that way o over the last few years yeah look uh, uh, licensing is definitely something that has evolved and has and continues to evolve and you know being a part of a you know boutique license um which is you know almost self-licensing without yeah. being self-licensing you know, i'm in a great position there but um is something that five years ago, six years ago, I would not have even contemplated. You know, yeah. um, it just wasn't worth it. But the shift now has become, you know, and we've seen the numbers. You've seen the shifts. You know, the the smaller, smaller self licensed or, or smaller boutiques um, far outweigh the old yeah. license the models, and that is be it's, it's I see it purely as a risk 
situation, right? Mm. So if you're in a big dealer group, which, you know, great, you know, and everyone's got those choices. I'm not rubbishing those because I've been part of those and yeah. there's some fantastic, you know, of course. great licensees out there. But the risk factor now is the lowest common denominator, right? So yeah. your risk you're running as an advisor isn't you, it's that one person in that big group who yeah. may let the side down and you're exposed in that way as opposed to a small group of people that you know really well that are of similar competency and similar you know work levels because it's a really it's a big trust exercise these days right yeah. it's a very it's a very different dynamic yeah and as you say you know uh, with QAR and and you know we'll see what measures come out um making self licensing more simple would be i think a real boon for the industry and allow people to develop different models yeah, and different, you know, open up. And th- that's the way I'm seeing this QIR thing. It, it, licensing's part of it, but at the moment, you are pretty restricted on what model sure. of your business yeah. is, right? Um, unless you really go hard in a particular area, you're right. But, but you know, the, the gap or, you know, for – you know, that the, we used to do, you know, back in, in what my business used to do and and, the, and what True Direction was set up to do was to be in the group area, you yes. know, look after. Our, our vision was always to look after a lot of people, not just yeah. a few, right? Yeah. Um, that's been thrown out. That's yeah. not existent. You can't, you can't make money. You can't actually yeah. do that yeah. properly. And you see that even the super funds and, you know, everyone, they, no one's really doing that small one-on-one, yeah. you know, light advice um which a majority of the the world needs absolutely <laughs> so yeah. so yeah. that that so that's but, what the 80 percent <laughs> all of a sudden qir maybe opens up different business models which yeah. you know i find exciting and you know it's sort of like well what what do we do now you know do we want to yeah. just keep a, a business that's you know high net worth clients or, or high touch clients you know people who are prepared to pay a certain yeah. amount per year to for you to, to you know really give them and I see it as high touch more than high value, you know, high high net worth. But yes, a client who needs high touch versus you know, yeah, well, hand holding. All of a sudden, QAM may open up those old doors. Yeah, for authorized advisors, you know, licensed advisors to to start pivoting on their models a little bit more. Yeah, you know? that's, so that's, that's the way I'm sort of looking at it. Um, yep. and I hope. You know, I don't see it as something I need as threatening to advice at all. It's just trying to make things a bit easier so that we can see more people and um, just improve that side of things, as opposed to trying to look at our margins and how we need to squeeze more. And from a business point of view, I never look at it from a business point of view. Interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, the licensing is is one one element. The business model element, I think, is a huge thing. Um, I have had the absolute privilege of learning about a lot at this stage of micro-niching financial planning companies that are doing extraordinarily well. It's almost like if you go back a decade and longer, it was I micro niche by looking after rich people, <laughs> yeah, and now, totally. and now the the niching that's involved is so crazy because every single every single career path needs a niche financial planning service. So tech uh, pilots, expats. You name it, aged care, keep going, right? Like there are so many different models that are out there where people can pursue interests that they have or experience that they have. And I think you're probably right. I think the QAR makes that a hell of a lot easier. Well, it'd be nice to just be able to um, just not rely on that one niche. I mean, look, because, and I think about our business and it, We've we started a niche, but now you, you sort of have to be a generalist as well, a, re, a oh, niche course. generalist, which doesn't make any sense, right? <laughs> but that's what it is, you know. Essentially, because you talk about aged care, we've had to learn that. You know, yeah. we talk about you know, pilots, we have many pilots, but <laughs> but you know, but there's I, I think of our um, client base, and it is very diverse, and yeah. it's you know, if you'd asked me that that's what I'd be doing when I set this business up five and a half years ago, I'd be like. No chance, mate. <laughs> now, and we do, and we love it, and yeah. you know, it's it's great. And we, but you've got to be really careful 
You've got to be really careful about who your clients are. Yes. Right? And that's something that in the past sort of look after everyone. We don't. Yeah. On purpose. You yeah. Know? Um, so you've got to vet your clients and make sure that, you know, they're not going to cause you or your business harm in, in the future. Yes. In terms of... Um, and I don't want to be yeah, going rogue on you a little bit. Sure. You know what I yeah. mean? Because it's... Yeah. It, yeah, you because know, all you've got is your reputation. So you just yeah. got to be very careful, and you want people who listen to your advice. Yes, like anyone can give advice, but yeah, um, the the trick is to get people to, to take it up, right, and do yeah. this and implement it. Yes. Um. So we we're, we're really slow with our onboarding with clients for that very reason. We just want to get to know them. We we have really knuckled down on our or, or focused on um, just looking after referral business. Yeah, knowing where our refer- keeping a small amount of referral sources, but really making sure that that's recognised and that's part of it, and that yes. people do refer because that's you know when you get like like for like and people come in and they've got the right expectations, the, the trust's there, and um, you don't yeah you're less likely to get a rogue, <laughs> but, right? And we're not talking about right, yeah. Uh, uh, like well, said, I mean, and, it's- and it's not rogues actually. It's not rogues. It's just um, you can't get along with everyone. Sure, yeah. But I don't want to look at my phone if a client's calling in. I think I've said this before. Yeah. And go, oh my god, that person's calling, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't want that. A hundred percent. Well, so- one, one of the things, one of the things that just off the back of the QAR as well is, and this sort of goes into what you're saying is, let's assume can, from here that the QAR is picked up. Um, let's assume that. The cost to serve, right, is halved. Now, how that happens, I can't oh give you the exact. Don't, 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 don't put no, that in the no, universe. No, no, that, but, oh, but just, just you're going to make me pass out. I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> you won't have to just, drink so much. Just imagine, tea, mate. <laughs> so, yeah. So the cost, the cost, the cost of um, the cost to deliver advice halves. Dare I say it? As a result, the cost or the time to deliver ha- is halved, right? Where I'm kind of going with this is there's there's a there's a universe out there where the ability to go from 100 clients to 200 clients exists. Yep. Yep. Um, let's assume uh, you know the the market has already priced in the value of advice, and and we're not we're not discounting um, from where it is. But we're taking on twice as many clients. What are you thinking, or where does your mind go to in terms of implementation efficiencies? Because that's kind of the next step. I think. I think it, it, most advisors I speak to, the the leads uh, or, or you know potential for new business isn't so much the issue. Um, I think a lot of people are saying the way that you just said they're being particular with who they work with. Yep. Um, but assuming that there are the, the, the issues up front and the cost and the time is halved, the implementation actually doesn't get any easier. Hey, that's that's the, we all know it's the biggest block roadblock at the moment. Like yeah, SOA production is probably not that not as bad as it used to be. Yeah. Especially you know yeah we're using a, an external company to yeah to, yeah yeah and and not we're, we're using that not just for efficiency but for compliance reasons as well yep. it's just you know yep. it's a safety it's, a, it's having a wicker keeper there like it's just like making sure that you're double checking things right so yeah. that's that's the value of that that we see but um until until that changes but <laughs> um so but implementation i mean i've just come out of our weekly so we have a weekly meeting your your team so yeah we, yep. we have a zoom hook up every monday morning what do we got to do? Like, and <laughs> yeah. because you've got to keep track. Yes. And how do you do that? You know, absolutely. Shared spread, you know, shared Google drives, those yeah, sorts yeah, of things. Yeah. That's what we use. Yeah. Um, and we've got an implementation process, right? And because yes. you can miss things very quickly, very easily. It's, yeah, yeah. it's really, really difficult. And you've yeah. got to make sure that you've got a, you know, each client has a, has a champion, I suppose, who's, yep. Running that, yeah. Well, I'm everyone's responsible. That. responsible, I'm responsible for that. No so, one's responsible. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So we all know every week, but you know, even then, it's like, oh, didn't do that last week. I've got to get on that today. I've got to make that call. I've got yeah. To. And because we're uh, what we call product agnostic, which I yep. suppose everyone is these days, but yep. you know, 
it's all over the place, right? It's yeah. not like we're just yeah. logging into one provider and having Absolutely. a look, right? It's, yeah. You know, there's challenges coming from every provider. Yes. And then once you bring insurance into it. Christ oh almighty. Oh, my God. That's, you know, you talk about the biggest hassles in, in yeah. financial advice right now. That, Actually. That I, is it. Well, no, no, insurance no. no. I, I, I can't talk about it right now, but there is some development going on that I've recently seen, which uh, who knows, that might change. Oh, uh, mate, uh, no. Who I. Uh, no. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. The insurance industry is uh, in a obviously bit of a state, it needs right? to change. Like and, obviously, uh, and, and they're all th- way. And I don't think they've, so, yeah, I don't think they've addressed it well. But you know, I might be controversy here, and all the insurers will call me. But um, no, it's it's a you know, it is a hard game. That and that, that for me, because of it. Look, let's just a simple scenario. You know, you're moving, you're, you're rolling over someone's super from you know something that's yep. probably not priced that well these days, yep. and there is a lot out there, or you know, they're on the government's shit list or whatever it is. <laughs> um, you know, so you're rolling over a super, but they've got insurances involved. Yes. Right. And you're writing them a so they're going from a group to a retail. Yeah. Underwriting. Yeah. Everything stops until you go through that. You know, yes. and they, they they put a PMAR out there. So, you know, they're trying to get in touch with the local medical clinic, trying to get a report from a doctor who's overworked and Yeah. That whole process is yeah. archaic. Yeah, man. And just stops. Yeah. Because you can't do the rollover. Yeah. You can set the new fund up. You can't do the rollover. You can't implement. Yeah. You can't. Everything. Until that's go. Everything halt. stops. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And so these are the challenges. And there's other, you know, obviously other challenges around there. But that sort of, that sort of implement, like how do you keep track of that? Like. 100%. How, how, do, you get, how do you keep the client engaged and yeah. not feeling frustrated with the process? Yeah. And you know, how do you hold your hand, held the hand through that? And then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then nine times out of ten these days, you're getting an adverse, you know, if there's anything, it's an adverse. You know, we had a big discussion this morning around our insurance book and yeah. some of the conclusions that a, a, an underwriting team will come back to you with is just, you know, you yeah. scratch your head. Yeah. And then you're the one that's got to go back to the client and deliver, yeah. uh, you know, a, a, a much worse result than we thought at the start. So, again, <laughs> implementation um, takes many facets, but you're right. If if we could somehow improve that, it would be great. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I can't. I, I can see. You know, as you said, the 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 cost to serve. You know, yeah. making it easier. Um, requirements around statement advice, licensing, yeah. fantastic. But at the end of the day, the, the grunt work needs to be done, and you just Absolutely. need to get through yeah. Yeah. those processes. And the better suppliers, which you know, look, there are obviously there's new people in town, and they're, yeah. they're, they're if we can regenerate this advice industry, then suppliers will have to come to the party and make yeah. it easier for us, you yeah. know, and to get our business because it's not about paying us anymore. It's, it's not about helping you there's get no incentives done. there, you know, around come with us and you'll get, you know, super overrides, all those sorts of the old day stuff, right? And, yeah. and even insurance, right? It's a flat commission. Everyone's doing the same thing. So yes. it's not like there's any carrots hanging out there yeah. that you go and go, well, I'll go with them because it's the same price and I get something else. Yeah. So the only thing they can give us is time, our time back. That's good. That's where they, you know, to keep advisors using them, you know, and yeah. the insurers must be, you know, I don't think they're struggling because the markets are okay, but I think they're, they're, their inflows are down massively, right? Yeah, 75%. Massively, yeah. Which is huge, right? And yeah, yeah. If my business fell inflows by 75%, yeah. I'd, I'd be having to review why I'm even in here. But um, yeah, you know, there, there. I mean, obviously, look, uh, any financial planner who's worked in insurance, no one's wishing to see that, right? Like, oh god, no. no. Insurance is it's, for we, me. Insurance is a, is integral in the advice process. I agree. Right? I, I, it, it's yeah. We I, look. I, sometimes I talk to Kath about this, my business partner. We, we sometimes take it too far when we try to think. Of everything, and some yeah, you, know, you yeah, see yeah. Pump, some people just niching and just going. Well, we're just going to yeah, deal with yeah, that. Yeah. We'll deal with it. So we, we we sort of probably cover too much sometimes, but it's just who we are. Um, but insurance, we have to. You have to do that. If if there's a need there, you have to. You know, yes. If there's a gap there, you need to cover that gap. Yes. Um, and it's not pumping insurance up anymore. Like a lot of the time, we see people and they've got too much insurance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll dial it down. Yeah, that's yes. A lot of what we're doing. If if we're building their wealth, then yeah, their need for insurance goes down. But naturally. 
So, it, but you have to deal with it. Yes. We, we can't not deal with it. And um, it's a pain in the neck. It is. It is. And, <laughs> and, and it's, it's killing. It's, you know. it's one of those things like, and I have been thinking about this for a little while now. Uh, um, and, you know, there are many um, outsourcing solutions that are going on out there, right? Like uh, our chairman's highly involved in one. You, you're using one. You know, there's there's probably about five out there on the market that are big names. And then and then there's, you know, Australian-based sort of smaller uh, individual power planners. Uh, but the implementation, uh, uh, what I'm seeing is a massive implementation backlog once the QAR is done. It's 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 – it's almost it's almost like the every product has been able to hide around the fact the compliance has held everything up. But if that if if if, if that if that um, yep. curtain is pulled back, all of a sudden it's going to be the emperor has no clothes, and and, and all the whole industry is going to be standing there um, struggling with um, getting done what needs to be done. Totally. Sorry, I've just been distracted. Some of us we're superstars, <laughs> mate. People are taking photos of us okay, outside right. for some reason. But obviously, I'm in the building. Um, <laughs> but absolutely, no one has solved that problem and the implementation problem at all. And we can yeah. talk about it ad nauseum. But there is no and the off. You know, yes, there's outsourcing, but they don't know the clients like we do. They don't know the process. They don't know us. Like it's it's a sure, tool, yeah. right? And and. Some tools are better than others, so we yeah. we do outsource a certain part. But in the end, we we hired we hired someone who um to help us out, yeah, because it was just um getting too much, you know. Yeah. And that work, you know, it's not the fun bit, that's for sure. So you know, we we've got someone part time who helps us and sits in on the meetings and takes care of. The basics. Well, actually, I overheard a conversation you were having with a client the other day. I just, uh, uh, <laughs> we, we, it was just uh, five seconds, and you, you used the language. I actually thought you were talking to someone in your team, but when you said it was a client, and you said, um, well, yeah, when you log in, this is what you fill out. This is this is how you get it done, and and um, and so your implementation is obviously involving the client themselves to a certain extent. To help with their with their hand holding, well, some things you need, like they have to sign it. Yeah, when you so one of our super providers, so you know you set it all up. You don't print out a form and send them to to it anymore. It's all online, and so I'm just trying to hold their hand through yeah, that yeah, process yeah. so that they are signing off and it's on almost, the application. It's right, almost or, annoying that every single product has a different oh, they all do, mate. application process. There should and even be one. even the product providers have different. Processes for different products. Wild. Like super versus investment, things like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. it's not just – so you've got – that's the challenge. You've got to go, which which platform am I on? What's their process again? Um, <laughs> which oh, this, which way do I – yeah, how do I navigate this, you know? Um, yeah. Which oh, – look, that's – I suppose that goes with the territory. And, and if, you, if you are, you know, product agnostic, then it is a rod for your own back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We do quarterly snapshot reports for all our clients, right? A seasonal snapshot report. It's murder. M- what software are you using to do this work for you? Uh, oh, not, no. mate. oh, my Spreadsheets. God. Oh, my God. Spreadsheets and, and a word. down my spine. Reminds me a lot. But you know what? I mean, it works. We, we love doing it. Mm. It's a pain because yeah. you're, you're logging in to all these different providers. You Some don't even have logins because, yeah. you know, some... You know, and, and you know, we use industry funds. Some of our clients have industry funds, and we, if it's not broke, we don't fix it, right? If it's yes. fit for purpose, we're not moving. Yes. But you know, you've got to call them, and they've got different processes, and third-party authorities expire. And yeah, it's wild. It is, you know, but it makes us check every client's account yeah. every quarter. Yeah. To make sure nothing's wrong, right? Yeah. Um. So it is worthy. It is worth it from a business point of view, and it's you know one of our offers, but. It is murder. Yeah. Trying to deal with, you know, 30 different providers is, yeah. is, is murder. And implementing, each of them ha- would have a different process. Each of them would yes. have different requirements. Yes. Um, and some of the older ones, I suppose, haven't updated their platforms for a while and they're showing some age and you see that, um, yes. you know, and it's uh, nothing to do with their you know, APLs or, you know, not, nothing mm. to do with their, with their lists and investments and whatever or the products. But the interfaces are somewhat lacking. <laughs> yeah, I and, can think of a um, Yeah, uh, we all can. But 
it's you know it's hard to spend money on that as well like i get it what but yeah. you know if <laughs> If they face a you know a wall of implementation, if 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 all of a sudden yes we're allowed to go from 100 to 200 clients, can you imagine? Oh, don't I'm dreaming about it, man. It's uh, getting yeah, me very it's, excited. Look, but um, and, yeah, I, okay. I, well, I would love that. But you know, hmm. you've got to decide that as a as a business. But yes, providers, suppliers, you know, product providers. Um, need to be having a real good hard look at themselves if they're not already yeah. um, to say how do we. How do we help these advisors grow their yeah, businesses? Because yeah, yeah. without, you know, unless they're going to go and get advisors themselves, which they may, you know, yeah. under the QAR, that that that's definitely going to be a factor, you know, part of this. That yeah, yeah, you know, super funds will have advice channels, bigger bigger advice channels, yes, um, than they currently <clears throat> do. So you know, but but again, unless their systems are up to it, yeah, uh, yeah. how's that going to work? Yeah, you know, hundred um, percent. Oh, look, it keeps us awake at night and. Um, taking, makes this job hard. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's it's the reason why the job exists, right? Um, yeah. He, he, so, so thanks for exploring um, sort of the QAR with me. I, I think that's really interesting what we've got ahead. Um, another big thing that I wanted to chat to you about, <laughs> I thought you might have Here an opinion on this, is um, is so I'll, 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 I'll lay the setting uh, in case you're not fully aware, but regardless of how much – you know of this or not, I know you're going to have an opinion anyway. So, um, What do you mean? What are you saying? <laughs> so, okay. So the CEO of Vanguard recently came out and said um, that ethical ESG investing breaks the fiduciary duty and so they don't want to be a part of it anymore. Uh, the BlackRock, I think his name's Larry Fink or something to that um, – he recently did a, a you know an annual catch up where over the last couple of years to an accelerating degree's been talking about ESG not a word this time um, if you look at something like BlackRock's ESG if I only use this because it's kind of the biggest one in the world um, BlackRock's ESG fund uh, you know via the Morningstar reporting shows huge amounts of inflows for a few years and then since about 2021 certainly by 2022, it's going to outflows. Around about all of, sort of during this whole time that America has kind of decided that they don't want to pursue this, or at least there's there's now a schism, <laughs> right? Here we go. So I can see you warming up. In Australia, in Australia, there's no schism. It's headed in one direction. In Europe, it's headed in one direction. And in America, you got in the other direction. Are you finding more clients care about ESG and what happens if funds, holus bolus, end up moving away from these types of funds? Uh, yeah, look, it's a big part of the world and it's a big black hole too, ESG, right? It's a, you dive down there and it's just oh, yeah. everything, right? And, oh, yeah. and what is it? You know, that's this is the thing, the definition, what is it? But, yes. But uh, yes, we are, I, you know, a few years ago, it wouldn't have even well, – I didn't have a client talk about it, even though every fund manager was in my ear saying, yes, 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 ESG. And I'm like, no one's asking for it. Yeah. They are more so now. Yeah. Um, but, again, I push back and say, well, what does that mean for you? So, we – actually, it was, you know, it was the old uh, well, ensemble, but, the you know, the X, uh, XY uh, uh, portal. Yep. There was a guy on there shared a, a, a questionnaire that um, – Yeah. Yeah, we we took and adapted, and that because I was like, that's a great solution. Awesome. Because you're asking, you know, and that's what you guys do really well. Share, you know, get people to share information. I yeah. was like, that's really good. I'll adapt that. Awesome. Because the question you've got to put it back is, yeah, what's it mean to you? Yeah. Right? Now, funnily enough, I, I mean, I, you can the cynical view would be that also of ESG is that people are moving away from it because those are small caps that are getting smashed in the market, right? <laughs> so, because it does, it, it's, right. you know, I had a discussion with the client and it's like, yeah, you want to, you know, you're not sure about mining and all that sort of stuff. And he was, and he, but I'm like, do you want to make money or not? Yes. And his wife was like, we want to make money. Yes. And he's like, look, so I, you know, just did a bit of a sort yeah. of, I went through it and went through a process and, and did filter some of the funds, but also had a good conversation with, 
this guy also around the fact that, you know, people would see BHP as a, you know, dirty miner. Yes. But I see that uh, the, that company as being at the forefront of changing and actually trying to be yeah, yeah, yeah. clean as possible in yeah. a world that- yeah. Well, it's like anything. Yeah. You, you, your chances of changing a system from within the system are much greater than changing a system from right. outside of the system. And and you know those types of companies, you know Fortescue's and that, yeah, uh, they, they're you know what what they're just going to be, become Kodak. Like well, they they they, yes. they need to adapt and Absolutely. go into hydrogen, go on well, these Fort, things. Right? Fortescue just, I believe, sent a tanker around the world running on hydrogen. Absolutely, you know right? what I mean. Like that's awesome. And that, that's, that's- where, where the where the output, I believe, I could be wrong here, but I believe the output from hydrogen is water. Absolutely, that's that's amazing. Yep. <laughs> Rather than yeah. pollution, they're pumping water. But it's also a very volatile gas, and yeah, you know, yeah, remember yeah, the yeah. Hindenburg, right? So <laughs> let's touche. let's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the problem with it as well, right? Yeah. So it is it is a, it is a dangerous a it is yeah. a dangerous situation. So <laughs> well, and th- this is what holds it back. You know, nuclear, like that's the other thing, right? right. You know, you look at nuclear yeah. energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's scared of it because yeah. the headlines. But mm. you know, realistically, that's. Not a bad option as well. So, but, you know, irrelevant of that, I think ESG will just become part of. So, so whilst it's, you know, and cynically, again, I would see ESG as being a bit of a sticker, you know, something for the BDMs to call around and and have a chat to you about. And this is our new ESG fund. That's great. Well done. Awesome work. I'm not going to put money into it because it hasn't, you know, been around forever, you know, those sorts of things. So, You've got to take that for with a grain of salt. Yes. But ESG will have a big place in investing in the future as the next generation comes through that it is a a non, you know, it, it's just a no, no, yeah. what's the word I'm trying to say? Non- non-negotiable. Option, non-negotiable. Yeah. Exactly. Non-negotiable. Like it just has to be part of it, yes. right? So th- that's going to well, be con- part of it. It's kind of so interesting, right? Your green but- credentials need to be part of it. Yeah. But again, my question is what what, is it, what does ESG mean to you? Because it means something different to each person. Absolutely. Which goes back to that document. We send that to the client and then we get yeah. a good understanding of what they're actually what they saying. by that. Exactly. Yeah. Until you get to the heart of what... What what's important to you about that? You know, is yes. it is gambling? Is it you know what yeah, what you yeah, know? There's yeah. different well, parts, everyone, right? I think, I think this is why it's hard because everyone's ethics is so different. I mean, in today's day and age, you could you could say it's um, it's unethical to have uh, a, a, a board within with one gender on it, with just one gender on it, absolutely, right? um, and yet. Another person could say it's unethical to be selecting based on gender. And so, whose ethic – one is pragmatic, utilitarian-esque, and the other – and I learned all this through the ethics um, research that I did with the uh, with the CFP. And the other one is sort of that deontology, I believe it's how you, how you pronounce it, but the concept of like it's right simply because it's the right thing to do. So, it's almost circular referencing in that nature. But – it, it it's hard, you know, and so it it is interesting to go down the path. Like, what does ESG? And and I was actually speaking to yeah. a fund manager, a managing director of a fund manager, just on Friday, and they were saying that this the concept of greenwashing, right, has just made everything even more complicated. Because as soon as you start going down this path, then you get a rap on the knuckles and say, "Oh no, no, you didn't take it seriously enough," and so. And it de- and it's definitely happened, and obviously we've seen fines and things like that, right? right? Yeah. And and absolutely that's happened, right? And that's but at the same time, like that's just marketing. again. Again, what does ESG mean? Do, what does it mean to the fund manager? What does it mean to the advisor? What does it mean to the the client? And what does it mean to the the body of clients, right? And so now I can see what's starting to happen is um, is companies are going to be taking a route where they don't actually use the term. ESG. So, so for example, one of the the funds that I was having a chat to was um, they're going to start calling it a carbon conscious. Right. You know, but this is the level yeah, that spin, we're going. The right? Spin doctors are in, and they're uh, yeah, like yeah, okay, okay. Uh, well, yeah. well, we tried ESG. We got wrapped over the knuckles, and then we found out it wasn't um, uh, um, p- prudent fiduciarily. Yep. So now we're going to call this a consciously car- a carbon conscious 
fund manager. Mate, I think this is just starting. That's the first I've came across it. Yeah, and um, we've seen this in, over the you know last fifty years of evolving that that this whole market funds management. You know that whole market evolving over time. Yeah. You know. You know, I knew a time before there was funds, you know. So, you know, it was really, you know, it, it was um, – so you, this is all part of marketing. This is all part of uh, <laughs> trying to niche down as well and then yeah, trying to yeah. differentiate themselves yes. from the multitude of, of you know, uh, fund managers that are out there in investment. Yeah, and there's investment a lot. House. Mate, they're, they're, they, you know, I get calls every day. But yeah. – Look, essentially, my job is to filter out the crap for my clients, 100%. right? And that's all I do. Yep. I don't get caught up in the latest and greatest. Yep. I'm not looking for that. All I'm looking yep. for is to get the return for my client that they need. Correct. Not the best because you can't, right? Correct. You, you can't. And how much you are you willing to risk to aim for so the best? It's about structure for me and our yes. clients. It's, it's all about Reduce that. Risk. We use, you know, I've used a fund manager for 20 years, you know, that's yeah, that, yeah, I, yeah, so yeah, that yeah. I know really well and I know yeah. they're just going to deliver the same thing every year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up and down, whatever. That's going to happen in markets. Yes. But, you know, we need to be um, conscious of what we do yeah. and how we carry ourselves and how we look after our clients' needs. Yes. Um, so ethically, responsibly, take that very, very seriously, you know. Yeah. Funnily enough, I was watching the the, the Bernie Madoff. Um, oh, right. You know the the. Was oh, that the guy you've been using for twenty years? Oh my God! <laughs> Don't even. That is ridiculous. But, um, but you know that 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 guy. Yeah. Had no reason to do what he did, but he. That's a weird con- thing. That's wasn't a it? really weird story. That yeah, one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a new thing on Netflix. I was watching. I was like. Oh. I'm gonna yeah, because I've seen the movies and all that, but there's yeah, a new yeah, one there. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is. I actually haven't watched it. Does it you go should. into a, why Abs- he right. does it? Yeah, so it's all. It's, yeah, I, I think there's ego. There's all sorts of things, and I think he dug himself a hole he couldn't get out of and didn't want to go. Sorry, I'm not the the Sorry, genius. I under, yeah, I underperformed right. instead of yeah. doing that. His oh his excuse God. was, oh, I, I just I'm a people pleaser. I wanted to please oh, everyone. God, it's like yeah. piss off, mate. This is all about you. Yeah. But this. <laughs> But, you know, and we've seen these people who call themselves financial advisors. Yes. You know, even locally, you know, yeah. we've, there's famous cases in Australia. Yes. Who, you know, cause people to distrust us. And that's yeah, yeah, where, yeah. you know, we probably, you know, go over. And I know, you know, most people would who are left in advice now. Yes. That's all we've got, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our reputations and making sure that we deliver the right thing and have those tough conversations. If something goes wrong, you've got to be on the front foot and yeah. again the other way. Yeah. So ESG becomes a, f- a-, a noise, yes, yeah, yeah, that I tend to try and filter out, yep, right, um, because I could go down that rabbit hole and be lost, yes, right, and trying to find. The- Instead, I talk to my clients, understand what they need to get, and and then I my job is to get them there, right, yeah. um, with Perfect. the least risk as possible. So ESG is something we need to understand because it's everywhere, yep, but it's also something that we need to. Consider a noise. I like it. I got one last question. <laughs> I got one last question for you. Okay. Uh, we've known each other for about 10 years. Probably more. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and my question to you is, do you see financial planning, you know, you, you, you see financial planning sort of in the way that I see it. And the way a lot of financial planners see it in that it's, it's mine. It's ours, right? Like it's the industry. It belongs to us like we're responsible for improving it right in the 10 years or or even longer since we've known each other and we've and and i and you're as dedicated or as passionate about financial planning as as any other financial planner certainly as equally as myself do you see it headed in the right direction are you happy with where it's headed or dare i even ask are you happy that it's where it is compared to where it was 10 years ago Yes and no. <laughs> am I am I am I comfortable that I'm still an advisor and proud to be? Yeah. Okay, awesome. and I'm not going anywhere, right? Uh obviously plenty of people are left and I don't blame them at all, you know, when people have got different different lives to live. I'm I'm still here and I'm not going anywhere. Uh I love being an advisor. I love interaction with clients. I like solving those problems. That you know, that's essentially I found this niche, you know, this mm-hmm. this thing called advice. 20, 23 years ago, and um, it's changed so much. Is it going to get better? I think it is. Yeah. I think it is. I'd... Well, has it gotten better? No. 
in the last 10 years? Well, has it improved? No, it's got, no, in terms of doing the job, yes. it's got a whole lot harder, mate. A whole lot harder. It's got harder, but harder. do you say that what it delivers to clients has improved? Oh, 100%. Okay. So, clients have never had a better. Awesome. Never had a better, right? They they have clear delineation of who their who their advisor is, who they work for. That advisors have never been more independent. I'm yeah. allowed to use that word these days. <laughs> have never been so unaligned, you know, or, yeah. or, or as we call it, product agnostic. Yeah. You get you turn up to an advisor and you are getting structural financial advice. You're not getting a product. Yeah. You're not. You know, and clients still ask about that. Well, I'm not going to be stuck in a product, am I? Yeah. No, it's not about that, right? Yeah. It's not about that. This is all about you know, structural advice for a consumer who comes in. Yep. They want advice. Products are secondary, if not third, third rung down the road, right? Agreed, yeah. That's uh, ad- products fall out of the. Uh, if you get the advice right and the structure right, the products become self evident. Yeah. So, and they've never been. So clients have never had it better in terms of the cost of advice. Yes. Whilst everyone says it's expensive, and yes, it is, but advisors aren't making more money. They're probably making less than they used to, right? Yeah. Um, because there's no kickbacks, there's no super overrides, there's no, you know, there's none of that sort of stuff, right? You're not getting fun funded at the back end, right? Yes. So it's very clear. It's you know who's getting paid, what they're getting paid, how they're getting paid. So. I think in terms of consumers and their protection and what they're getting and, you know, the people left are dedicated professionals. Like we're all in this, you know, what, how many of us are left? 15,000 if that, yeah. you know, we're in, right? Otherwise yeah. you would have gone a long time ago. So I don't think the end, I think the people have, have never had it better in terms of yeah. comprehensive, holistic financial advice. Yes. The gap in terms of that is the rest of the people who, don't need a full financial plan, don't want to pay, you know, yeah. five thousand dollars or whatever it costs for a plan these days. Yeah. Um, who just need a little bit of help. Yeah. Which for me, the upsetting part is that, you know, I had a we had a business I was part of a business that did that. We had twenty thousand clients, which is ridiculous. Yeah. But that that was about helping as many as you could, right? Yes. That's the gap that I'm so I don't think that the world is better in the advice world. I think we needed to go through the pain. Yeah. There were institutions that were obviously doing the wrong thing and didn't understand what advice is. That's the big thing, I think. And even the politicians and regulators, not a great handle all the time on what advice actually is and what it constitutes. We know because it's it's the most personal financial relationship you'll have, right? Because advisors need to understand you at a very deep level to, to make sure that we're fulfilling your need. I wonder if we should put together some kind of strategy. Like that's right. you know, an where accountant does your tax. You know, politicians the, all get financial planning. Oh, mate. Why they they've, they've they've got defined benefits, mate. They they they're fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, being cynical. Um, yeah. Yeah. Look. Uh, yeah. So look, it's a yeah. They they get their their pensions if they've been there long enough, and yeah, government cars and things like that. So it's it's and it's very. I'd love to to educate people on how it all works, but. You know, it, it's it's not a, a mortgage broker comes in and solves your problem and then see you later, right? Yes. And I'm not having a go at that. Like yeah, that's yeah. that's their business model and it, and it works, right? And they do a great job and they're you know keeping the banks you know honest and that that was the whole thing, right? And that's yep. true. That's what's happened. That that whole business has been disrupted. You know, ten years ago it was ten percent of the business. Now it's eighty percent of the business, what? right? You just go yeah. and talk to a broker, right? Yep. You don't go to the bank. Tax agents, accountants, do your tax, structural, you know, even the ATO is probably their biggest um, competitor these days. But, you know, but do they really need to understand you and your base motivations and, and what you're trying to achieve in your life? God, and, no. and what, you know, and the, the number one ticket for retirees in terms of our advice is that slide we show them at the end that shows them how long their money's going to last. Right? That, that. Yeah. That's it. That's that's the the, the money shot, right? That's yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what it yeah, is, right? Yeah. You get that there. If you spend this much, your money's going to last till you're 110. Yes. The relief. That's that's all they care about. Yeah. Am I going to be okay? Right. That is what we do. That moment when they go, oh, thank God, or you know, I really hate my job. I've got one yeah, client. Yeah. I hate my job. I hate what I'm doing. Yeah. I want to retire. Can I? 
Yes, we work it out, and here it is. Wow, here, that's yes, awesome. you can. Yeah. You know, those that's that's advice. Yes, that emotional, you know, eliciting that emotional response from people. That's the impact we have. Yeah. That's the impact. The tools we do, you know, that's but that's what we do. That has never really changed in advice. If you have been a proper advisor, that's what you've always. That's where you get your little kick. That's where your high is. You know, that's what I really nailed that one. That was good. You know, yes, that hasn't changed. That's why I got into advice. I've seen it all over the last 20 years. It's evolved so much. I just pray and hope that the industry gets a break because we've just been smashed, right? We've been blamed for the ills of the world for a very long time. You know, it's always the advisor's fault. We're just the end, down the end, right? It hasn't yes. all, there's been advisors doing the wrong thing, but it's not essentially been, a pro- like you're saying, you know, it's not essentially, a, we own it, but we haven't run it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just hope that coming into the, into the future and that, you know, we've got it down to this is all that's left, we're in, we've all passed our whatever we need to do, our exams, all these sorts of things. I just hope that we get the respect from the politicians, from the uh, the, the regulators, you know, that we get from our clients, we can't really very well speak, but, but from the, the rest of the world that to say, hey, let's just let them get on with life. Yes. Find different ways of doing things, not yeah. try and restrict them because that's been a, a big issue, right? Yes. The SOA is still the worst document in history that we have to produce yeah. that people don't read, essentially. You know, that's yeah. – and, and it's an ass-covering exercise. Like that. But if we can – you know, if you allow some, some movement and, and, and take the restrictions off – People will innovate. People will find different ways of doing things. People will improve it. Advisors, we're, you know. Yeah. And considering we're, we're, the We're good business people and, and we're also, you know, smart. We, we, we want to solve yeah, these problems absolutely. for people. So I think there will be innovation. The, the more that you squeeze down an industry, the less innovation there is. So I'm hoping that there will be more innovation, there will be more money spent and that advisors will be left to do what they do every day, you know. Um, that's my hope for our, for our you know, Beautiful sector, and I love yeah. I love advice. Yeah, it's just sometimes you know, mate. This was everything and more I could have hoped for. Thank <laughs> you so much for coming. Always on. good catching up, mate. No Cheers, problems mate. at all.